So I'll start off by welcoming everybody to the 2015 IRD Annual General Meeting. It's uh, certainly been an exciting year for IRD and for the, uh, our, our business in general. You know, as the eight distinct markets that we deal in have merged and into what we call the automated highway system as we see that progress moving forward much more quicker than it has in the past. As a result, if there was any theme that we're looking at, it's, it's accelerating into the future as we look into 2016. First, we'll start by looking back where we came from. And I go back to 1980 when the company was uh, incorporated with a single load cell scale. And the first projects were primarily research and development and data collection. And what the company had to do is find a use outside of the data collection that would have had some continuity. And of course, it was in the truck weigh station marketplace. And in 1983, we delivered our first truck weigh station where we were using the single load cell scale as a ramp sorter on the side of the road to sort trucks that had to report for overweight or dimension violations to the static scale. And this was done with optically programmed signals. Um, credential inspections were met, were um, uh, sporadic at the best. And the majority of the trucks, so we hoped, would bypass the scale. And then as we went into the late 1980s, you get into the traffic data collection with the introduction of our TSR line, our TCC line. We introduced the piezo sensor and acquired the Dynex sensor as we looked at the opportunity to get into the toll business. The second decade was certainly a year of, or a decade of, of marketing as we took a, a bus in a joint venture with Roadware outfitted it so it traveled across the United States and Canada visiting every DOT center, every state capital with our equipment in the, in the luggage bins underneath and were able to demonstrate what our systems could do. In addition, going from MS-DOS to Unix and getting into real-time operations uh, really improved our systems. As we introduced the bending plate, it was IRD bending plate at that point, the slow speed whim, and we saw the opportunity to get into the toll business with uh, providing a complete toll system to the country of Columbia. We also looked at other ways of doing business. We established Data Dynamics as a joint venture with PAT with the hope that at some point we would be able to merge with PAT. We acquired a company called Telluride, which uh, got us into the uh, public transportation marketplace. Another sensor came into the marketplace, the quartz sensor by Kistler. We were able to adopt that into our systems and start offering it. But most interesting, we got into, uh, we delivered the first automated truck way station in the main lanes. And that, in that system, we incorporated wireless communication, uh, automatic vehicle identification, so that we were not only sorting trucks on dimensions out in the main lanes of the highway, we were also on the credentials as identified out of their uh, electronic license plate. In 2000, due to changes in uh, PATH's ownership, we had to dissolve Data Dynamics and we decided to get out of the urban transportation marketplace, so we sold Telluride. Allowed us to focus back onto our systems and uh, our core marketplace. We introduced the iSync Electronics, also with the, with the new improvements in uh, wireless communication. We got into uh, the virtual way station, being able to add more technologies to uh, already highly deployed site data collection uh, network. But also we got the opportunity to acquire the assets of PAT in Europe, PAT Chile in uh, Chile, of course, in Brazil, and later on uh, acquired 50% ownership in XBCT got us uh, in a very good position as an international uh, footprint. We delivered, also delivered the first remote controlled way station, further advancements in technologies, which takes us into this decade. And we're delivering the uh, 
first way station with auto release in, in South Carolina. Introduced the uh, improvements to our saw, but most importantly through our R&D we got into, we hope to introduce by the end of this year, our vector suite of uh, sensors. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in our R&D section, but to date, IRD has delivered three quarters of a billion dollars worth of products and services, over a thousand lanes of single load cell scales, over 50,000 Dynex sensors, 6,800 bending plates, 10,000 piezo sensors, 3,500 Kistler sensors with over 17,000 lanes of vehicle and wave motion sensors. Quite an accomplishment for company that started off in the basement of Art and Mark's house and uh, grew to be an international corporation through our own organic growth as well as uh, acquisitions. And that's only possible by the strengths of the company, our expert and proven experienced team, our intellectual property which was developed by our team, our broad range of technologies and products and markets, our know-how our international footprint, and probably uh, uh, something that we should all really be proud of is our international reputation and uh, position in the marketplace. In many ways, there was IRD before there was ITS. All started by that uh, core R&D and ongoing R&D, driving innovation, and the various products that we've developed and successfully introduced into the marketplace. As I said, the vector sense tire sensor suite, the first sensor of its type that has new data for traffic data collection and, and highway agencies as it can detect and, and uh, provide information of the, the configuration of the tires and the position of the tires in the roadway as well as the footprint and the tire pressure providing new information for highway agencies not over for data collection and planning because that information is very important, especially tire pressure for bridge and highway design, but as well it provides new information for, for uh, uh, toll collection, for new sources of revenue, highway protection, and also opportunities in the private sector. As uh, trucking companies have come to us and uh, found the opportunity to be able to detect over pressure or under pressure tires before they leave their yards. In addition, we've been able to add new capabilities to our recurring revenue, our service revenue, and, and the ability to be able to monitor the components and the sensors at all of our sites so that we can be more effective at delivering our, our service contracts and add more, provide more value to our customers while managing the costs of doing this business. It's a very important part of our business moving forward. We've been able to, through our R&D, improve our products, such as our, our saw adding way in motion to it. And this is a direct response to what our, our customers are asking for in portable way in motion. A very promising, important product for us going forward. Machine vision has advanced considerably, and so we've been able to, in addition to LPR and, and um, OCR, optical character recognition and license plates, incorporate uh, hazmat placard readers for monitoring and, and tracking hazardous materials being hauled in the interstate systems in the United States and then across Canada. Upgrades to our software, such as our improved user interface, and once again, adding machine vision to them where we're seeing the image of the truck as well as the image of the license plate. And hopefully by the end of the year or early next year, we're gonna be adding the data from the vector sets as they're being deployed out in our uh, existing uh, installed base. Important part of our business is partnerships. We've recently introduced the Comport product which for access control and uh, vehicle inspection in the security markets, a market that we have from very uh, high expectations and believe there's going to be applications in our core business such as our CBO marketplace as well as uh, border crossing. We're pretty exciting about, excited about the opportunity of that. So 2014, 2015 were years of, of growth and improved financial performance. It's uh, all recognition of uh, maturity of our, our marketplace and deployment of, of systems as, as ITS has become an integral portion of 
the highway infrastructure programs that are going forward by highway agencies, not only in the United States and Canada, but worldwide. So our net earnings have increased 85%. Revenues are up 29%, approaching 60 million. EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which is an important num number to us because it, tells the it gives us an indication of the cash in the company, resulting in a stronger financial position with uh, $11.3 million of working capital for, and a strong outfit, outlet for continued growth, both short-term and long-term. As a comparison for 2014, and the key number here is the 18 cents versus 10 cents, of our uh, net earnings, sales approaching 58 million versus 45 million in uh, 2014, resulting in a uh, shareholders' equity of $1.58 versus $1.36 last year. All very strong numbers, and for the folks here that are shareholders, one way or other, employees, it uh, gives us a very strong foundation to go forward and provides us with the financing to be able to invest in projects, invest in our team, invest in uh, training, and invest in uh, research and development going forward as we go into 2016. It also gives us an opportunity to reflect on our revenue base. There are eight parallel, very complementary marketplaces, and they have a lot of opportunity going forward. Of course, the most important being commercial vehicle, which is a indirectly a, a spin-off of the data collection systems where we started from, but data collection continues to be a very important part of our business going forward. Of course, toll systems, we see uh, tremendous opportunities and we certainly see the opportunity for growth in uh, the percentage of toll systems going forward. Telematics gets us into the opportunity to get into the cab of the truck, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to vehicle communication, all parts of the automated highway system as we go forward and, and some important technologies that we've got to know. And maintenance, a recurring revenue. Uh, as we see the business change going forward and highway agencies no longer want to own and operate the equipment, we see the opportunity for IRD getting involved in private public partnerships or delivering our systems as a service. Uh, that recurring revenue hopefully growing as we go forward. It's also uh, ben very beneficial to us in terms of uh, uh, customer engagement and retention. Geographic area, we made a strategic decisions a number of years ago to reduce the dependence upon one main customer when 95% of our business was in the United States to uh, Explore the offshore marketplace. Of course, the uh, acquisition of uh, PAT's worldwide operations really helped us in that regard, but also our own investments in working with our partners. So that offshore now composes 27%, uh, down a little bit from 2014, but certainly an area that we expect to see to grow as fast and uh, in the longer term could actually increase over top of the growth or the percentage of our Canada and U.S. A lot of opportunity there, and we feel that we're in a very good position. Q1 is another growth quarter, an important quarter to us, because traditionally the first quarter has always been very challenging to us. And if we had a loss in the first quarter, which is uh, traditionally what's happened, we've always been in a catch-up position going into the second quarter. The international footprint, certainly the weather this year in North America helped, but uh, I think a bigger component is uh, the mix of projects we had and the type of projects that we had that uh, moved us from 2014 where we had a break-even year first quarter to this year we have a, a profit of three cents in the first quarter. So we see continued growth, $15 million in the first quarter in sales versus $11 million a year before. As I said before, three cents versus zero cents. We've really got to watch our gross margin. Our gross margin target is north of uh, 30, 30%, and we see the opportunity as we go forward moving that up into 30, 35%, and hopefully in the long term, 40% is our recurring revenue and we get to charge more for our proprietary technologies just as a vector and we get that out into the marketplace. 
So what does that mean to you, once again, for the shareholders and for the, the employees? It's, it's security. It's job security and strength. It's money that we can reinvest into the company and make it stronger and hopefully create a better return for the employees and the shareholders going forward. So this is our profile from the outside. And uh, a firm by the name of Cantor, and it's uh, been quite a few years since anybody from the outside has really taken a look at IRD, has done an analyst report. And they're, uh, it's been a very powerful document in the uh, securities marketplace, taking a look at our, uh, our shares, our, our growth opportunity, he took a look at our marketplace, the potential in our marketplace. He's uh, taking a look at uh, IRD as an, as an organization and uh, our strengths, our weaknesses, and uh, produced a very positive look at uh, IRD, uh, a uh, report that's available if you want a copy. Looking ahead, we have, we believe, we've, we'll maintain our uh, very strong position in our marketplace. We have a very positive long-term outlook for the company, consistent with the report that uh, Cantor produced. We believe the strengths are global footprint, which enhances our future prospects. And as I said before, we believe that our international business is going to grow. We're, we've got a diverse, but complementary line of ITS products and systems. We have a strong, loyal, very engaged uh, customer base worldwide and in the United States. We see that recurring revenues, uh, revenue stream growing with a very high, ca high quality cash flow uh, revenue stream. We're very uh, excited about our R&D plan and we see the investments in infrastructure continuing and growing as we go forward. We believe that we're very well positioned in the automated highway system. And, you know, this is just a glimpse of it where you, you're looking at vehicle to vehicle communication, vehicle to infrastructure communication, the management and provision of data. We see IRD in there at the providing the data, managing the data, um, providing the data to our sensor suite and participating in the traffic management and, and user pay that we see going forward as uh, governments are looking at new ways to finance highways. So it's, it's a very exciting and ultimately get into the autonomous vehicle and where that fits into the marketplace, a little longer range, but it's real, it's coming, and we're gonna see it. Our customers and our markets, the diverse markets, We've got a, a diverse revenue stream, not dependent upon any one market, any one customer, which gives us a very uh, a good position going forward. And as many ITS reports talk about, it's when ITS gets into the private sector and, and gets into the, into the automated highway system that we're gonna really see the growth and opportunities for IRD. And we believe we're very well positioned with the technologies and the systems, the customer base that we have right now. So we're sitting on a lot of game changers. A lot of opportunities for growth. Once again, investment in R&D will be uh, an important part of our business going forward through controllers, sensors, and products. We see the concessionaires as user pay, tolls, and weight distance tax is a way of the future as, as highway agencies, and Canada included, the United States. You're going to see more toll systems. Uh, the state of Oregon is already moving on a weight distance tax. Countries such as India, uh, China, Korea already have uh, Wimmet toll. We have other countries that are experimenting with it and uh, considering it going forward, but you're gonna see uh, more user pay and how that works in uh, financing highways. Infrastructure protection is always going to be there with billions of dollars invested in infrastructure. Highway agency have no choice but continue to install systems to protect the infrastructure. And as international financial agencies such as World Bank and Asia Bank enter into new developing countries, protection of the infrastructure is key in, in moving forward. And as I said, ITS delivered as a service and uh, with 35 to 45% of our revenue stream already there, we think we're in a very good position for that. And especially as you're looking at data and big data, it's gonna take to, to manage and operate these transportation systems. So our strategic goals growth plan, our long-term plan incorporates all of that, and it also 
incorporates some great opportunities for our team. Maintaining our corporate values, our vision statement, be a respected business partner, mission, deliver value to our customers, respect, re responsibility, honesty and innovation and delivering customer satisfaction. And we're, that's all built into the many things that we're doing with our ISO program, our lean program, core for safety, all important parts of our business and delivering good um, service to our customers going forward. And it's all built upon a great team, worldwide team, with our team in, in Saskatoon, in, in uh, Spring Grove, Illinois, our team in China, our team in India, and of course, uh, Chile. Our team in India has been investing in a, a new business line as they're getting more and more engaged with our partner, XEMG, in the wire harness business, providing a good, stable cash flow for that going forward and all supported ultimately by a great board of directors who were voted in today. Ray Harris, Ray Cola, the two Rays, Mike Walton, Harvey Alton, Sharon Parker, led by Art Bergen. And we're excited about uh, our board meeting tomorrow and the one in person one we're gonna have on the 30 and 31st talking about uh, where we're going and uh, our plans with our long-term strategic plan going forward. So I thank everybody. Thank you. Well, I guess the bar is open. <laughs>